Today we're going to do problem 2304. Minimum path cost in a grid for U. What? I don't know. Problem 2304. 2304. 234 minimum path cost in a grid. Okay. So for this problem, you are given a zero index M by N integer matrix grid. Okay, yeah, we've dealt with grids before. Um, consisting of distinct integers from zero to M times N minus one. Interesting. You can move in the matrix from a cell to any other cell on the next row. All right, so there's this very strict um, set of rules about how you can move. And apparently you can go from one row to the next row and that's it. All right, interesting. And so if you're at this position x, y, such that x is less, you can move to any cell x plus 1, x plus 1. Okay, so you can move to any position in the next row. So if you're in row i, you can go to row i plus 1, and you can go to any cell in that row. All right. Each possible move has a cost given by a zero index 2D integer ray move cost, where move cost ij is the cost for moving from a cell with value i to a cell in column, column j in the next row. Okay, that's kind of weird. So move cost has values, which are like nodes. So you have nodes and then the cost to go to their neighbors, which are at the next row. It's, I've never seen it given like this, like because this is basically like the weights of the system. The cost of moving from cells to the last row of a grid can be ignored. Okay, the cost of a path in a grid is the sum of all values of cells plus the sum of cost of all the moves made. All right. So it's a sum of all the nodes you visited. So I guess there's a cost at a node. And then of course there's a cost to traverse between nodes. Return the minimum cost of a path that starts from any cell in the first row and ends at any cell in the last row. Okay. So you want to go from here to here. All right. So we have this grid five, three, four, zero, two, one, so five, three, four, zero, two, one. So each row and then move cost. For node zero, right, because this is the zeroth node, it has nine to go to the left one, eight to go down. For node one, it has stuff, but it, we don't use it, right? For node two, same thing. Node three, 18 to go left, six to go down. Okay. This is weird. It's just a weird, it's a weird way of providing that information. Um, so I'm kind of wondering if we're going to have to to build out something, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, so I have already drawn out the uh, system here, right? So for this problem, the minimum cost is what? Uh, apparently you're supposed to go from five, zero to one. So you go from five to zero and then zero to one, and that is your minimum cost path, I suppose. And I'm having some insane delay. It still hasn't registered that this is what's going on. Tim Cook, why do you do this to me? Okay. Is this faster? I just drew. Dude, you got to be kidding me. Sometimes I just hope that if I unplug it and plug it back in, it'll, it'll just magically work. And there's, there's absolutely no scientific basis for that claim. I just, I just believe, you know, you have to have faith in yourself, but look at that. Haters going to hate dude. So this is a, apparently the optimal path and it has cost what? Well, you have costs associated, um, with each of these nodes that you traverse, right? So that's going to give you five plus zero plus one equals six. And then you have cost associated with the links that you used, right? So use these two links. So then you have an additional cost of, ignore that, that's from a previous problem. You have an additional cost of three plus eight equals 11, which so if you add these things together, you have cost 17, right? And that's this output 17, right? So you have cost associated with visiting a node and then costs associated with traversing between nodes. All right, so one very, interesting part of this problem is it's already given as a DAG, right? So this is a directed acyclic graph. Now you might be asking me, why is that important? Well, we should know if we have studied um, 
data structures and advanced algorithms, whatever, that a DAG, any system that can be modeled as a DAG can be approached using dynamic programming, right? And the idea is, well, since something is a DAG, well, that means it's directed first. Directed meaning that, you know, there's these directed edges in the system, right? There's this notion of an edge or a, a, a arrow going, a link going from one node to another node and not in the other and not back in the other direction right so there's an edge right there's a link between five and zero but it's directed right because you can go from five to zero but you can't go from zero to five right so there is a link but that link has a direction it's not a two-way system it's a one-way system so it's directed um and then a silic just basically means that there's no cycles in the system right which is important for this problem and we'll see that in a moment um because and how do we know there's no cycles well intuitively like you're like dropping rows right so you're all like every time you move you can only go to the next row right so you can never get back up right because in order for there to be a cycle you'd have to go down and then eventually get back up and go down again so you have a cycle but since this system you're always moving down you'll never have the opportunity to go back up to create that cycle so it's acyclic and then it's a graph, meaning that, you know, you can model it with vertices, which are the grid cells, and then edges, which are the links between the cells. So this is a directed acyclic graph. So why is that uh, useful? Well, if we use a, dyna a, little, a dynamic programming approach, right? Well, what we can do is we can find the optimal path to get to each vertice for each row. And then we can find subsequent paths going down additional links. So if we found the optimal path to get here and then to get here and then to get here and then to get here. So let's say for these green nodes, we knew what the optimal path was to get to that node, All right? So for, for this node, right? The optimal path would be go five and three and zero, right? Cause that's eight versus this path would have nine for four. The optimal path is what's five plus 14, 19 would be this path here, right? So let's imagine that somehow we found the optimal paths up to this point. Well, then when you played the game of, uh, this is zero, this should be eight here. I forgot, apparently. Something got erased, I don't know. Things happen in translation, so there's supposed to be an eight here. So imagine for the green nodes, we knew what the optimal path was. So that means when we're looking, so let's imagine that we're looking at two. So what's the optimal path to get to two? Well, if I know the optimal paths for the rows above me, right? So I know what the, how long in the best case, the longest time it would take to get to four or the most cost associated with, I'm using time because I'm thinking of something else, but the, the highest cost to get to four, I know that information and I know the highest cost to get to zero. So I know already, right? The value here, right? The highest cost value here is what? It's, um... 14 plus four, which is 18, right? Cause you would take this link here. So you'd have to spend plus, plus five, right? So five plus nine. Oh shoot, now I'm one, no, okay. Five plus four is nine plus 14 is what guys? What is it? 23? I can't do basic math. Okay, and then to this node, the to the right node, the, the path length is eight, right? Cause five plus three plus zero, right? Cause you have to add the length and add that in. So you know the optimal path to get, the optimal cost to get to each of these nodes. So when you look at this node, right? All you have to do is look at the paths that go into it and ask yourself the same question, right? Since you know this value, it's gonna be in the best case 23 to get here. And in the best case, it's going to be eight to get here. And you know the cost associated with adding the edges. You can say, well, the best case is I spend 23 to get here. And then I'd have to spend two to get from there to me. So that would be a cost of 25, right? And in this case, I spent eight to get here. And I have to spend nine to go down this link, right? Eight to get here, nine to go down this link. So that'd be 17. So obviously it's better in this case to take this link here, right? It's better to take this link because I know that for here, the cost is 17 versus going from here is 25. 
and I know that that is optimal because I know that these are optimal states for four and optimal states for zero, right? So I have optimal information for four. I have optimal information for zero. Therefore, whatever information I gather from them is the best that they can do so I can decide what's best for me because they've already provided me what's best for them, right? Four is providing me what's best for it is the best cost it can do. Zero is providing me the best cost it can do. And I know the cost of using both of them, which is this link, so then I can just pick the minimum of them, right? So what you basically want to do is look at all of the previous nodes from the previous row. So if this was like 10 wide, imagine there was 10 nodes on this row. I would look at each of those nodes from the previous row and ask them, what's the best cost you can provide me with, right? Four, what is the best cost you can provide me with? And he says, uh, you know, it's a little expensive to go down this link. It costs 23. And I'd say, okay, 23, wow, it's kind of, kind of expensive, uh, whatever. Um, and it costs you two to get to me. Okay, so it's going to cost total 25. And then I asked the, the next note of the previous row. I'd say, hey, zero, what's the best cost you can provide me with? And zero says, you know what? I've been working hard. I've been cutting corners. I've been, I've been using the tax code. I've been maxing up my 401k. What? I don't know. Uh, so that's eight. So it tells me that it's eight. So it provides me with eight. And I say, okay, you can do it at eight, but your cost to get to me is kind of high, right? It's nine. But in total, it's 17, which is less than what four is providing me with 25. So I will use your path. So as long as you have the invariant where you solve for each row in a row, right? So then you solve two and then you solve one, right? So if you just solve for every row in a row, every row in a row, subsequent rows can always pull information from previous rows to find optimal paths. So what is this idea of DAG come in? Well, the beautiful thing about a directed acyclic graph, right? Is that there's a direction to this data. So if you solve this, since it's directed, the subsequent node can be solved after. So there's an order in, in which things can be solved because they're directed. And since it's acyclic, right, you don't have a situation where you're like, okay, to get information for me, I need information on the previous state, right? To get information for two, I need information on the previous row. Well, to get information from the previous row, I need to get information from the row before that, right? So since it's not acyclic, there's a place you can start, right? You can start at the top row. Versus if there was a cycle, right? Imagine there was a cycle somehow, some way, we defied gravity, right? and there was a path like this or something, right? Just for the sake of argument, just to show you why there's this essential component that's acyclic, right? In order to get information from two, you need information from four. In order to get information from four, four, you need inform. Okay, in order to get information for two, sorry, you need information from the previous row. In order to get information from the previous row, you need information from the row that's previous to that previous row. In order information to get information from the previous rows, previous row, you need information from the previous rows, previous rows. What's the previous row to this one? Well, there's a link connecting here and here. Oh, this is getting really messy. So that previous row to the previous rows, previous row is this row. So if there were links like that where there was a cycle, you'd end up in the same spot because you need information from the previous row, which needs information from the previous row. But if that previous row's previous row was you, well, then now you're stuck in a cycle. You'll never get that information. So directed means that there's previous states. Acyclic means that, you know, there's a place you can start and a place you can end. All right. So that basically means that our recurrence relationship, right? So we'll call it D for dynamic programming, which will basically just be our catch. Right, so for any node X is, well, the minimum cost to get to Y, where Y is a node in a previous, so we'll call this node X here, right? So any node X here, and then Y is any node in the previous row. So the cost to get to the previous row plus the, the link between them. So that would be the min cost of Y to get to X. So I'm using very, very fluid syntax here because I'm not. So that would be the price to get to X, right? Min cost for each Y in previous row, we'll call that cost. And then uh, you have to add in the cost of just using X alone, right? Because a node has its own cost. 
So I guess that would be X, right? Because... Alright, so this is really sloppy, but it's fine. So... If we looked at this node, right? If we were looking at node X, so here, X... Right, X has a value you have to add in at the end, right? Because there's a, a cost of using this node, which is one in this example. And then you have the previous row. So this will be the previous row. Ugh. So this is the value associated with the previous row. So we'll call that here. I'm just trying to add some color so you can see how this is supposed to work. And then the cost to go from Y to X, right? That's this link here, right? The link to go between them. And then we're gonna look at the entire row, right? So we look at the entire row. So that means we look at all of these information here. So hopefully that color scheme makes a little bit of sense of what I'm, what I'm saying here. The problem is I added way too many things. So we're gonna erase a little bit so we can see how this is supposed to work. So you can see the color work its magic on you. Right, so I have this node X that I'm looking at. And then I look at the entire previous row, which is this previous section. I take the value, the cost to get to that node in the previous row. And then I look at the link between them to find a cost. So I do that for each, each node in the system. And then at the end, we just return whatever the minimum cost is for the last row in the system. All right, so how in the fudge are we gonna write the code for this? So we have the, we have the kind of recurrence relationship, the idea, but since this min, minimum cost thing is given in such a strange way, I'm kind of curious as to how I'm actually going to write this code, but we'll see what goes on here. All right, so, all right, all right. So we only need information, right? We only need to save information from the previous row. Um, Right, you only need to save information about the previous uh, the previous row because you'll never have a link from two rows previous, right? So you only need information for the previous row, so we only need to save that information, and then in each iteration will update what we know about the previous row because we don't need to save everything since the very beginning because for this row it only matters what happened at the previous row, so we don't need to save information about five when we're looking at two because we'll never have to consider what happens at five anymore. Only what happens at four, what happens at zero. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. So the optimal cost to get to the first nodes is just the value of the nodes themselves, right? So that we'll call this thing D and it'll just be grid zero. And I'm gonna make a copy of it because I don't know exactly what's gonna happen if um, things don't go on. So then we'll look at each row in range one to the length of the grid, right? So we'll go to the end of the grid. So first we'll look at this row and we'll say, well, the cost to get to the zeroth node, so we'll call it new D and new D. <laughs> It'll make sense in a second why I'm doing that. But um, so we'll just say the cost. So the cost to get to each node is the row itself, right? The grid at the row Okay, so like this, the initial cost is four and zero, right? It's definitely gonna be at least four and at least zero to get to these um, locations, right? Because that's the value of the nodes themselves, all right? And then you're gonna consider what? So you look at each row and you'll look at each node and you'll make a decision. So we'll look at, it needs to be the width of the row. So we'll look at each node in range length of grid at the row. So the length of the grid at this row. So we'll look at each node in that range and we'll say, okay, what's the cost to get to four from the previous row? Okay, so ND at this node, it'd be plus equal, the minimum cost of the previous row. So we call that Y, but we'll just call that uh, So, ugh, Prev, Kerr, I'm just trying to think of good names. So the cost to get there, 
plus the edge. So the cost of the edge between us. So what is that? How do I do that? So the move cost of uh, blah, 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 the grid at the previous row So how do I get the prev? Um, so I'm looking at the previous row and which node am I gonna look at? Because prev is a index. So, okay, but that thing has multiple links. Zero, one, the cost to get to zero. Okay, sorry, it's just the way that the, the way that move cost is provided is kind of weird. So I have to think through my head, like what is the correct, um, like look at how crazy this looks. So I look at the previous grid row. I look at the, the prev node. So that's the node that I'm considering as a previous node to, to, to add to my system and then I want to get its cost to get to me so its cost to get to me will go outside of this this is crazy so that would that this will give you the the cost right so the move cost to get to well what's the previous node at the previous row so node zero so if I'm looking at four as my node and I'm looking at five as my prev so this would be index zero. So I take the value that's at index zero, which is the value of the node, which is five. So I'm saying, what's the cost to get from five to the next node, which is zero in this range? That is crazy, okay? So we're gonna look at prev in range, what? Length of grid, right? Because it could be any of the previous rows that provide me with the minimum cost path. So we'll play this game for each previous row. And at the end, we'll set D to be equal to ND, right? So we'll process the entire previous row, save all that information. And now this is the new D, right? This is the new previous row. And at the end, we'll return the minimum of D, right? Because the minimum of D will be associated with the minimum cost path. All right, so let's run that. This this I'm still not very confident about, which is, you know. Oh, not length of grid, right? Because length of grid is the number of rows, but we're looking at the previous row, so the, it's the width of the system. So this is length of grid at the row. Okay, so just so that we can see what's going on here, let's print D at each index. So let's print D. So the first time we run it, D is gonna be five and three. That's what I expect, All right? And we're gonna look at four and zero. So the length of D is five and three, which is these two information. And then we figure out, okay, what's optimal? What's the optimal cost to get to four? Remember in our example where I couldn't do basic math, we said it was uh, 23. I erased it now, but I remember but it was 23 to get here. That was the minimum cost. And the minimum cost to get to zero was eight, right? Because you took uh, five and then three, right? The, this path here to get to eight. And then at the end, you're gonna have the cost to get to this bottom row. So maybe I should have printed D after, but whatever, right? And that's gonna be 17 and 19, right? So to get to this node, the minimum cost is 19. The minute get to this node, the minimum cost is 17. Kind of weird part about this problem is this idea of using the previous row in this fashion. Okay. So with that, let's submit the answer and let's pray. No, I haven't done this yet, but I did think about it a tiny bit before we start the problem. I will admit. Okay. So what's the runtime of this? Um, so the cool thing about this problem, okay, so let's look at Time. 
So the time the runtime is actually kind of difficult. So we're gonna look at time and space. Okay, so let's say that let's say that n equals the length of grid. Right, so that's how many rows there are. And m equals the length of grid zero. So that's how many the, the width, right? So in other words, this is you can think of this as the length, uh, the the height of the system, and this is the width of the system. Okay, so in terms of runtime, we have to look at each row, right? So we have to look at each row. So we're definitely going to do n runtime here, right? Because we have to look at each row. So that's the height, and then we have to for each row, we have to look at each previous rows value right so we look at a row we look at an element and then we have to look at all previous elements shit this is actually kind of slow okay we have to look at each rows element so we have to do m operations and then for each rows element right so we do n operations for here and then we have to multiply that since it's a nested for loop we have to look at each element, and for each element, we have to look at each previous element. So for each element, we have to look at each previous element. So this is n times m. So this is n times m squared. So that's kind of it's kind of nasty actually, but I'm not tripping about it. It's fine. Okay, and then in terms of space, what's the space? Space time complexity. Um. Right, the thing is like this is linear if you consider I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole. Okay, so space. This is where it's cool because we create a this grid size, but notice here it's the the we only need to keep information about the previous row every iteration. So we save information about the previous row. The previous row has width m, so we just need O of M space for previous row. And O of n times m squared for the test. So I'm guessing you could probably solve this with Dijkstra's too. And it could be a little bit faster because you'd have m log v, m log m plus n. So it would actually be faster to run Dijkstra's, I think. I'm pretty sure. But um, this works. It's fast enough. I'm pretty sure your interviewer would be, would be happy with this. Because uh, it shows that you understand how DAGs work, how dynamic programming works. And then at the end, you could off-cuff just say, oh, by the way, you could probably run Dijkstra's here. But uh, only say that if you know the runtime, because I'm kind of like a little unsure about what that runtime would be. So don't give, don't, you know, open yourself up to an opportunity to not know something, right? Meaning like, don't say something if you don't know the answer fully, because then that person's going to realize that you don't know the answer fully, and then they're going to ding you points, right? So only speak to what you know. Unless you had like the very, like if there's two seconds left in the interview, you'd be like, oh yeah, by the way, you can use Dijkstra's, bye, <laughs> you know, but don't say like, oh, by the way, you could use Dijkstra's and then they're like, oh, so what would the runtime of that be, right? So now you've opened them up to another question to test your knowledge and then you're like, I, I don't know. So don't do that. But uh, with that, I had some real good luck with this problem today. I don't know where all of you guys are from, but in Western cultures, it's really bad luck to open an umbrella inside. So I'm going to do it just to show you that I'm badass. No, I'm joking. All right, peace out, guys.